Quick, is the ACT a test that measures intelligence? Mm. No. Do you have to be a genius to get a 36? Mm. No. Hey, my name's Rishabh. I'm a freshman at Harvard studying neuroscience, and I'm here to tell you the Princeton Review, Kaplan, all those test companies that want you to spend thousands of dollars on private tutoring and coaching are fake. What I realized after getting my 36 is that it's all just about technique. All you gotta do is focus on your own on improving your technique and practicing. And in this video, I'm gonna give you 10 guiding techniques that will help you definitively increase your score. My first strategy is to bubble at the end, and you can even do this on your AP exams or other sorts of tests. Rather than going from question and then bubbling back to question and then bubbling once again, this wastes a lot of time and it constantly has your brain switch from one task answering questions to the other task filling in that circle. And so it's far more efficient to first just have your workbook right in front of you. Just forget about that whole bubble sheet completely and just work on the workbook, do all of the questions. And then at the very end, quickly go through when you have five minutes left and bubble in. I used to have a watch or some sort of timer or clock in front of me. And so I would look and notice, hey, I have 10 minutes left. That means now I'm gonna spend five minutes reviewing all my answers and then at the last five Five minutes, I'm just gonna quickly bubble in all those questions. My second piece of advice is to guess the letters E slash K on your exam. Now this seems like a super weird strategy, but trust me, it actually works. It may seem like the ACT has all of the different sections and all of the different answer choices to be weighed randomly. For instance, 20% A, 20% B, C, D, E, F, right? That, that seems kind of obvious, but that's not actually the case. They expect students to actually bubble certain answer choices over others more frequently. And so some studies have actually shown that choosing the letters E and K on the test are the most effective. So you're either gonna have those five bubbles that say A, B, C, D, E. So in that case, guess that letter E, or you're gonna have G, H, I, J, K, in which case you guess K. So always guess that last letter on the test and that will lead to the highest score possible in terms of guessing. Now my third tip here is to actually do your easier sections first. Now if you're on the reading section, you might have different types of passages, for instance, one science, one history, and different types of questions in those. And this is something that I did when I got my 36 on the ACT, because I was going through that reading section, the first one I think was just just some sort of dialogue type scene. And I was like, shoot, I can't get any of the questions right in here. So I said, hey, I'm gonna ditch this passage. I'm gonna go over to the two science passages that I know I will be able to get a high score on because I'm more of a science type of guy. And I was able to immediately do those passages way faster. And then once my brain kind of got warmed up by doing those other passages, I actually came back to that earlier passage that I was having trouble with and was able to get all the questions right. My fourth tip is actually for the morning of the test, and this is something that students commonly make mistakes on. You know, they'll go out and get their protein bar, they'll get their water, but they don't do anything else. When you're in the car to the exam, when you're actually going there, I want you to pull up an ACT English or ACT reading section, okay? And actually physically read out loud those words in that section that warms up your brain and starts it getting primed for actually doing the questions. And even beyond that, do a couple practice problems. Once again, this will warm up your brain. In fact, I'd actually advise you not even to look at the answers because once you look at the answers, it just kind of, you know, may make your mood a little bit bad if you don't get those questions right. So don't even look at the answers. Just do the practice questions to kind of warm up your brain. Another hack I have that tons of students have done, by the way, I have a couple videos that have kind of gone viral in this ACT scene because students love the techniques that I give, is a cold shower technique. This kind of shocks your brain and warms you up in the morning and it's very hard to do, but I did it the morning of my ACT. I do it the morning before all of my tests and tons of students have left in the comments below saying, hey, this actually works, so I'd recommend you try it too. My fifth suggestion is to actually guess in a straight line. So don't do any sort of random guessing once again, like A, then E, then D, then, and so on, right? Guess in a straight line. Let's say you have five questions left, you ran out of time, just guess in the straight line for all of those five questions. That's gonna maximize your score. Now, over here, this is a little bit of a difficult situation because let's say you just bombed a section or you think you bombed a section. It can often be super demotivating and students will just kind of give up on the next section and then they don't even realize, oh, they got a 33, not, not too bad. And they would have gotten a 36 if they really tried on that next section. So I urge you guys, if it feels like you, you know, failed a section, 
don't give up. A teacher actually told me that one of their students thought they failed, they were about to cancel their score, and then they ended up getting a 36 on the ACT. So guys, don't think you failed, just kind of forget about the last question and keep going. Number seven is don't study any science terminology. Students will often fall into this pitfall, they'll start learning about different cellular organelles and they think that that's what the ACT science is about. It's not. You need to actually look at proper science questions, look at those practice tests, and identify what they're trying to get you to do. It's more of a reading comprehension, identifying statistical points, identifying things from a graph or a table, that's the type of question that they're looking for. I've actually made a full ACT science cheat sheet for viewers of this channel. Go check it out, link is in the description and pinned comment down below. Number eight is to do the first questions faster on the math section. This is a mistake I made on one of my practice tests right before I took the ACT. I honestly did not study that much for the ACT and was still able to finesse a 36. One of the reasons I did this is because I paid close attention to the mistakes I was making on the practice test. My first, one of my first practice tests, I made that mistake of, I finished the first 20 or so ACT math questions in about, I don't know, five, 10 minutes. And I thought, oh, I have tons of time left. It's 60 questions, 60 minutes. This is gonna be a breeze. And so I actually went and checked those 20 questions again. And that was a huge time sink because I actually then ran out of time on the last five or so questions on the ACT practice. So on my actual test, I made sure that, hey, these questions are easy, they're a breeze, but you just kind of have to breeze through them because some of the later questions do get much more tricky. They take a lot more time. And so don't think that, hey, I'm ahead on time. Let let me go back and check. Save checking for the very end of the test. My next tip here is to learn calculator math tricks. And this is something that helps your efficiency a lot, is just knowing how to use those special tricks on your calculator. And it's kind of a nerdy thing. I didn't even know people did it. But one of my friends showed me this cool trick. I actually took my PSAT test. And um, one of the questions took me a really, really long time. And I remember after the test, later some of my friends were discussing. And I was like, hey guys, like that question took me such a long time. Like, what are you supposed to do in that scenario, right? But what I ended up realizing was that all it took was a simple calculator trick. If I went on my TI-84 and pressed, pressed math to frac, it would automatically turn that super long decimal, I don't know, 0 0.855444, whatever, into the exact fraction that I needed in order to answer that specific question. So I'd recommend one of two calculators if you don't have a calculator approved for the test yet. That's either the TI-84, this is a solid choice, or the NumWorks graphing calculator. This is something a friend recommends recommended. I'll leave those linked in the description below. Make sure you get a test approved calculator that has all of these tricks that's super straightforward and easy to use to speed up your time on the math section. Finally, don't buy any sort of prep course or anything like that. I have tons of friends who spent thousands of dollars on summer coaching and they only improved their score very marginally. What they realized and what I realized too is that spending thousands of dollars on this coaching is just not worth it. What you should do instead is take tons of practice tests and study the right sort of material. That means cheat sheets, not textbooks for the ACT. And so I've made a compilation of exactly how you can do this, along with additional guides and tips and tricks for you guys on how to improve from your practice tests. You have exact layout to list out what you got wrong, what form code that was, what you could improve on next time. And this is the exact strategy that thousands of my fans have used over the last year or two in order to improve their scores massively. And so I'd recommend it. The link is in the description and pinned comment down below. If you found this video helpful, be sure to subscribe to the channel and let me know if you have any tips